Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and today we're going to be unboxing month two with Yarn Yay. So once again, I am not in a position after surgery to be able to get in and out of the floor, so we are filming in a slightly different arrangement. So I do ask that you guys bear with me as we try to navigate this new arrangement here. If there's wobbling as I'm getting things off the table, I'm really sorry, but I am trying to do the best I can do right now. <laughs> anyway, you guys, so last month we got a 100 gram hank of fingering weight yarn. The color I got was blues and purples. One of the other options was in pinks with speckles. And our patterns were the Hello Wave scarf slash shawl and the Wave Goodbye scarf slash shawl. So you could have bought a second skein to do a shawl if you wanted to, but the scarf took, in my case, 80 grams of the fingering weight yarn. I like the pattern just fine. I did the crochet version. I am still considering going ahead and doing a knit version as well because I do like the pattern and I would like to be able to compare the two patterns. And this seems like a pretty simple one to be able to do that with. I have not blocked it and sewn it, but this is my finished scarf. It will be more than enough for me to do a nice infinity scarf with, just with some very soft blocking. I will probably hard block this, but that's just me. We also got this keychain from Big Blue MoMA, and it is a branded piece, even though I would say this is one step up from what I would expect to get free, just because these, regardless of where I see them, do cost an arm and a leg. And we got a what I think of as marketing mailer, Tyvek bag. So the total value of our box last month was $39.93. I paid $35 before shipping. Our percent saved was only 12%. While I liked the project and everything, last month left me feeling kind of, I may have made a mistake here. Uh, if you go back and watch my video, I explained Vicki Howell and everything else. She does... Uh, make a very concerted effort in order to support women-owned businesses. Her, um, her values and ethics in her company are something she's very vocal about. So I do advise you, if you want to know more about Vicki Howell and the company she works with, go check out her videos on Facebook or on YouTube. I'm a huge fangirl of her designs and color choices the combinations of textures and colors. She, uh, her nitty gritty show that used to air on DIY is actually how I finally figured out knitting. So I do have a special place in my heart for Vicki Howell. I'm a little bit of a fangirl. So <coughs> yeah. So this is kind of the mindset I came into the box with. I understood that this was going to be more of a samplings box that we were going to get, you know, I'd seen like some mini skein projects and things like that. So I didn't know really how I was going to end up feeling about the box overall. I did did know that coming in. But month one, I loved the yarn. I enjoyed making the project and the extras were kind of for me. So on to month two. Whew. I'm trying to make this quick. I don't want to stand here forever in three days. Well, I am feeling substantially better. Still recuperating. So, first off, get my clipboard out here. Our pattern this month is a beret pattern. Our theme is springtime in Paris or ooh la la. What does she have? Box three. Yay, beret! And on the cover it says ooh la la. Très chic. So our first pattern is a knit beret. And here is a second kind of visual on what the beret looks like. I am not going to be making the beret out of the yarn this month. It's, you, I'll, I'll explain it, but 
That is the crochet version of it. You can see the banding. Looks like it might have something just a little special to it. And then the top is just kind of a basic increased round style tan. Uh, so I have started the pattern, just I'm not using, using the yarn from this. And the reason why I'm not using the yarn for this is I don't think I'll get enough wear out of a beret to warrant using this yarn. So this is Lorna's Laces Honor. The color is Old Rose, and the dye lot for this is Yarn Yay. So this was a specially dyed dye lot for those who were getting the subscription. This is 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk, approximately 275 yards, 100 grams. So first off, this yarn is gorgeous. It is tonal. That is actually, that's not shading from the room that we'll be filming later in the day and stuff. That is actually the tonal variation in the pink yarns. So for me, this yarn is too precious for something I might wear once a year. I like berets. I just don't frequently wear them, even though they style wise. Oh, wow. I am really shiny. Uh, style wise, they're probably one of the best options for me for hats. It's just not something I go to a whole lot. So I will be coming up with something different to do with this yarn, but I will be testing out the pattern and I will give you my feedback on that 100%. I'm currently doing the knit one. I may or may not try to do the crochet one as well. I just have a lot of projects I want to work on, so I can't guarantee I can do two projects every month, which is why I try to stick to only one subscription box. Our extras this month were a stitch charm stitch marker with a poodle. Might help if I flip that around so you can actually see the poodle. Because au français is our, uh, our theme here. We have a French poodle. We have an Eiffel Tower set of scissors and a Macon little trinket case. I've seen these sold as pill cases. I've seen these sold as stitch marker cases. I've seen these sold as catch-all cases. I've seen these a few different places. I've seen them in three different sizes. I actually have one that's a shade larger than this one that I paid about $2 for but they come in a big enough size to put your earbuds as well. So these do come in three sizes. This is the smaller version of that. Now about these scissors, I, through paper crafting, have become very, very spoiled with my scissors. And even in sewing, um, I don't like scissors that when you go to close them, they catch and then snip. So I do have a problem with those, but that is a me thing. That is not a general thing. They seem to cut just fine. They're perfectly fine for embroidery, scissors, sewing, um, you know, trimming yarn bits and stuff. They're perfectly fine. They do have a blunted tip, so they're nice to put in your project bags if you're on the go with projects like I am frequently. So this will go in a notions pouch for me, but I do, I did want to say that about the catch to the closure on them. I've been very spoiled by my little micro Westcott scissors, but I can't travel with those. They're very, very pokey, very, very pointy, and they will tear through a notions pouch like nobody's business, including my big old Ipsy pleather bags that I get. So ask me how I know that. So that's what we got. <sighs> For the yarn, I did the pricing based on the averages that I was seeing companies selling this style of yarn for, which actually is $28 to $38. Larna's Laces actually sells the Honor line for $30, which is a little bit more reasonable. It is a much more luxe, high-end fiber content with the Baby Alpaca and Silk. We have gotten this kind of a blend in other subscription boxes before, but normally it's the kind of thing we only see once every 13, 14 months. It's not something we see regularly. Normally what we see in these $30 to $40 boxes is definitely, you know, wool blends, wool with a touch of something fancy. Maybe, you know, sticking more straight with the merinos, but 
definitely we don't normally see baby alpaca and silk blend. That's just not the normal. So this is a little bit more luxe compared to a lot of the other yarns we get. I am doing my price estimate on the estimated value based on their $30 price because the bulk of what I saw was $28 to $32. It just happens to sit right in the middle. I was specifically looking at small batch dyers like um, Wonderland um, or it's Frab Frabjuous Fibers, I think is actually where that's located. But I was looking at places like them. Um, I just totally brain dumped the brand. They're another brand that I was introduced to at about the same time as Lorna's Laces. Um, I also checked out independent dyers, um, just small batch independent dyers to see what they were charging for this blend. And that, that that's about the going rate. So I'm okay with the price on that. Like I said, I have already purchased one of these in a slightly larger size for uh, between $1.50 and $2. I am giving this a value of $1. Now that's not a slam on this, but it is something I can find very frequently. Uh, 16 for $10 uh, was what I found you know, specifically on Amazon this morning. So I'm giving it a value higher than Amazon, but less than what I've seen in person for a single one. We go through this every time we get a stitch marker or a progress keeper in one of these subscription boxes. I understand that they're much cheaper to make yourself. I get it. But when you go on Etsy and stuff to see what people are selling their stitch markers for, $5 is the going rate for the charmed stitch markers. We see it over and over again. And it, it's an unfortunate reality of the cost of doing business. I mean, yes, it is cheaper in a lot of ways to make things yourself. But if you're buying it, that's the average going rate. And for the scissors, I did find these in a couple of different places. Amazon had them for $7 to $10. So I gave them a value of seven. I did see them for $6.50 at one sewing shop online. Once again, it's another one of those. I know shopping at Hancock and Joann's and places like that over the years, I've always been amazed at how much scissors cost, no matter if they're just the cute novelty scissors or if they're like really expensive scissors, um, like, you know, gingers or something like that, which <clears throat> if you don't want to have your jaw hit the ground, don't check out the prices of those. They're quite nice to use, though. I have used a pair one time, and they're beautiful. But so at $7 is what I ended up using for my estimated retail price on this. And that's unfortunately just kind of the going rate with a lot of these things. I, even Hobby Lobby right now, I've been noticing that their novelty scissors have been 5 to $7. So I, I hate to feel like I'm... Uh, trying to justify or be frivolous with this, but it is the unfortunate reality of what things cost in the store. So I do do my estimated retail values based on what you would be spending should you just go to the store and grab it or go online and grab, you know, from your favorite retailer. This is an average. It is an estimated value. It is not an actual value. It's to give us an idea of what kind of value we're getting out of this, this this subscription box. With the patterns for the knit pattern, I did do an average of six different independently designed patterns that were for sale. I understand there are free beret patterns. That doesn't tell us anything about the cost if we were to look at a paid for pattern. In this case, after do it, looking at six patterns, it was $5.57 was the average cost of these six patterns. For the crochet pattern, $4.27 was the average cost between five patterns. I did keep the search specifically to very simple beret patterns, nothing with, you know, cables and color work and things like that. So where did we come up with a total value? So the total value of this box was $52.84. And I was a little shocked that that's how much this came out to. Um, we did have the three extras instead of two. They were things that in the general retail market do cost more than most people feel like they can justify. I understand that. We do have a much more luxe variety of yarn this month. 
So I did also have to take that into consideration. It would be very unfair to say, oh, well, it's a $20 hank of yarn. When even at my LYS, I can't get it for that price. It's $30 to $32 at my LYS. So our cost before shipping is $35 for this box, which gives us a 34% saved or $17 saved. Now, when I was looking at this box, because I, I hear you guys, I understand it's a single hank of yarn. I get it. It's, it is a lot of money to spend for one hank of yarn, especially if you're not interested in the patterns, you're not interested in the extras, you're just going to donate them or gift them to other crafty friends. I get it. Subscription boxes might not be the route for you to try new fibers. You might actually be better off taking a risk going on webs, Lovecraft, Dara Moores, somewhere like that to purchase similar yarns. Um, subscription boxes are what they are. They do try to give you little samplings. These are not, I don't think, ever really intended to be a main source or a primary source of yarn for your projects to work on or the main source for your projects to be worked on. So I do want you to kind of keep that in mind as we're discussing this box in particular because the comment section stayed relatively tame. The PMs and emails got a little bit more heated with me about liking box number one but feeling but for this box, I do want to show you what I mean, and I'm not angry. I know Lorna's Lace Yarn. I've worked with their yarns before, not this one specifically. I Well, let me just tell you guys, this is so beyond not underclothes needed. This is like you could make an undershirt with this. This would make an amazing cami. It is that soft. But I know from experience, having worked with yarns that this company dyes, they purchase very high-end, good quality yarn to dye. So their base yarn is always very nice to work with. So when I'm looking at this box and I say, if I were to go to Lorna's Laces and pay $30 for this hank, would I then pay a total of $5 for the pattern book, the scissors, the macron, and the stitch marker? And as I've already purchased one of these, I go through these like butter. Trust me. These things vanish. All scissors vanish in my house. I may or may not have bought a progress keeper for myself. I definitely would have probably picked up a pattern for a beret style hat at some point, knowing that it had been tech edited and was a good quality tested pattern. If somebody had uh, said, hey, I really love this pattern, I might have gone ahead and bought it. So do I feel like the extras this month justify the extra $5 that I was charged before shipping? And I have to say, yeah, because I mean, cute, useful, cute. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this box, uh, especially once I get through with the yarn. Last month when I hold up the yarn and go, okay, I paid $22 for this. Would I pay $12 for the rest of this? No. And I made that very clear. I was not very happy with the extras. I don't understand why those keychains cost so much. Um, getting a, what I feel like is a free gift with purchase or a free gift at a convention kind of bag to me is not something I'm generally very happy about because I paid for that. <laughs> like that wasn't a free gift with purchase. I paid for that bag. So yeah, like last month I was not feeling the value was really there, but I really liked the yarn and I really liked the project. This month, the value is excellent. I don't, for me, want to do the beret out of very fancy yarn. Um, and to me, this is definitely a luxury kind of thing. This is not something I have a whole lot of in my stash. I have very few fine baby alpacas in my stash, much less the silk blend versus a like merino blend. So I won't get a whole lot of use out of the beret. And this is something I want to make sure I'm wearing more than once or twice a year. So I will probably do a shawlette, a scarf, 
something like that uh, out of this yarn. There are alternative patterns that are suggestions with the subscription box. So I might go back and look at, uh, there's one designed by Vicki Howell that is a crocheted chalette. I might take a look at that. Otherwise, I might go back to something, you know, fairly simple that I'm already familiar with that I know that is going to make that yarn pop. So that's kind of where I came down on this box. I'm not angry. We have $17 saved, so we're back on track with like a good savings. Now, this is our second month getting 100 grams of yarn in a single hank. I know in the past that has not always been what they offer. So I am not quite sure what's going on if this is just a prelude as they're moving into Wool Free Summer. So if you guys are interested in the subscription box and you have a wool allergy, I think it's May, June, July, and August, but I could be wrong. It could just be June, July, and August. They're doing wool free. So you will have a nice summer weight project that you can work on during the summer months. Uh, I don't know if they're going back to things like the unicorn tails and minis. I don't know if we're going to continue getting 100 gram hanks. I must have just randomly picked the best for me possibility of timing to get stuff I'm, I'm really more excited about. While I enjoy samplings and tastings and minis, I would rather get the 100 gram hank. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy just kind of diving in and really enjoying a yarn when I'm doing these. And... I, I have to say, I really love the color from last month. I mean, and it was a basic, you know, sock weight yarn. There was nothing to write home about it. It's, you know, more than soft enough to wear as a scarf. Love the colors. Would have loved the pink as well. So I was fine with last month's box 100%. This month, I just feel like this is too special for a beret. So I am doing it with an acrylic yarn that is a similar hand. So... I will share that with you guys this next month when we unbox month three and we will see what I have decided to do with this hank of yarn. Um, I think that's all the notes that I had. If I didn't answer a question you guys have, please feel free to comment down below. As always, I always invite you to leave your opinions down below, whether you agree with me or not. All I ask is that you are respectful to each other in the comment section and to me. Disagreement is wonderful. Having conversations helps people understand different perspectives. It helps us to understand how, how to make a business better. Um, if somebody happens to come across this and see, you know, complaints, pros, cons, what people are thinking about these subscription boxes, and sometimes, guys, I'll be honest, the companies I am reviewing have found the review videos down the line because this is, you know, hashtag not sponsored content. I bought this with my own money. I paid for this with my own money. I, I have zero relationship with Yarnier. I don't have a code to give you guys. I don't have a discount I can give you guys. I can put like the link that they give you to get like $10 off or whatever in the, the, sub, the description box down below if you'd like, but this is in no way sponsored content. I have 100% paid for this yarn, paid for this box. This is my money that has been invested into this, not, not anything I've received for free or am getting paid to review. So <clears throat> yeah, but companies have come back after I've reviewed their subscription boxes. A couple have reached out to me after the fact and said, thank you for reviewing us. Hey, we're thinking about what you said. That was some great, great feedback. We really need to hear, you know, pros and cons with our feedback. So leave your feedback down below because sometimes these companies do find these videos and after the fact, they do see what you guys say as well. It's not just what I have to say. So it's happened with Darn Good Yarns, it's happened with Crochet Society, and it happened with one other box that was a um, smaller company that they, they were just glad somebody was talking about them. So uh, anyway, you guys, that is what we have for today. Unfortunately, I still managed to talk to you guys for almost 25 minutes. I was trying to keep this under 20, but my mouth got the best of me. 
I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. As always, I love you guys. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Bye, guys.